In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of scripting the Bash shell. Up until this point, we've actually been going ahead and typing our commands directly into the interactive prompt. So when we do things like ls, those commands are instantly um, interpreted and executed by the command prompt. But one of the powers of the Bash shell is that instead of having to type commands in, we can actually put those commands inside of a text file and then have the uh, Bash shell go ahead and read those commands out of a text file. So in our case, if we wanted to write a really basic shell script, we could just jump into VI and um, write one up. So let's do that real quick as an intro, and then we'll start talking about the ways we can expand on and make Bash scripting, um, or make our scripts more robust. So I'm going to make a really basic script here. I'll just call it basic script, and I'm going to put .sh on as the file extension, because that will be the clue to me that this script is really contains uh, a number of commands that are meant to be executed. So I'm going to go ahead in VI and jump into in, um, insert mode. And usually what we do as the first line in every shell script that we write, we put the path to the shell that we want to execute that script. Why we do that is because sometimes you might write uh, a script for the bash shell, but if somebody was using, say, the corn shell or the C shell uh, and they try to execute the script directly, they would get errors. But in this case, regardless of the shell that the user is executing uh, at the time in interactive mode, they would be able to run the script and the script would then be able to call upon the appropriate interpreter. So this line at the top has a bunch of names, but the hash mark exclamation point indicates to the shell that this first line, and this has to be the very first line in the script, uh, is the path to the executable program that should execute the commands that will follow. Uh, this, this line goes by a number of names, but it's really just the path to the uh, interpreter. After you've inserted the line for the interpreter that will be in charge of handling the script, uh, I usually like to put a space in and then start to write my commands. And the way bash scripting works is that you put, just like you would uh, enter an individual command and then hit enter at the interactive shell, you basically put one command per line in the text file, keeping everything flush left. So if I wanted to have a shell script that created a file using the touch command, I would type touch just like I would at the command line, put in a space, and then the name of my file. And that would be my script. And any time that I execute the shell script, the touch command would go ahead and whatever directory I'm in, uh, create a file called tempfile.txt. If I want, I can go ahead and we'll just add some uh, additional items to this command and what we'll do is after that file is created uh, I'm just going to chmod that file to 777. So again notice these are two commands that I would execute on the command line but now I'm typing them into a file. I'll also mention, uh, well let's take a look at this then we can talk about some additional features. So I'm going to escape, I'm going to save this file and uh, I'm going to exit back out to the command line. Now you'll notice that I have my script. It's sitting in my directory where I edited it and what I want to do is go ahead and execute it. And there are two ways that we can execute this script. The first is by giving the name of the program that I want to interpret the uh, commands inside of the script file. So in this case, I just say, hey, bash, go ahead and read in the information uh, from this file. And I don't need to use redirection here because bash will know that I'm giving it a file and go ahead and execute the commands in that file. And once I hit enter, uh, the script runs, and if I do ls, you'll notice that now my temp file.txt exists. And notice that it's green, so my 777chmod worked because it's executable. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that file. And let's look at the next way. Uh, notice that that file is gone. So let's look at the next way that we can execute the script. Um, notice that right now it would make sense for my bash script to actually be executable. So I'm going to change my bash script to be um, 775 and that way it'll be executable uh, sure and now if I look at uh, L for that script you'll notice that it's it's read write and executable and uh, it turned green so now I can execute it so the next way to execute the script is once I have changed its permissions to be executable I can just say basically, hey, in this directory, execute this script directly. And when you do that with a shell script, what will happen is that first line with the hash mark and the exclamation point and the path to the interpreter will be consulted by the shell to find out where uh, or what should actually go ahead and execute the script. Now that we've talked a little bit about 
what a shell script is and how we can go about executing them, let's start to look at some basic constructs that we can use to make our shell scripts more robust. We can make our shell scripts interactive. We can give them some ability to make decisions based upon, um, basically make their own decisions when they run so that they don't need a user to um, give them information. And we can have our shell scripts do things like give, uh, read an input from the command line or read an input from the user. There's a lot that we can do. So in this directory, I have a file called bash snippets.sh, and it contains a number of really fundamental um, interactions that you might want to have with the bash, uh, that you might want to write into bash scripts. So we'll just kind of take a look through this file one uh, component at a time and execute it each time and um, talk about what each one does and how they worked or how they work. So the first thing I'm going to do is make this uh, executable. And so we'll do 775 and make that executable. And so notice that I've been able to make that change. And now let's jump into VI and see what we've got. So we'll work through this file uh, one line at a time. So what you'll notice is uh, initially too, in this version of uh, Vim, there are uh, lines that are blue. And so notice that any line that starts with a hash mark is blue. So the first thing we'll learn is that any line that starts with a hash mark, the very first character on the line is a comment. And you can think of a comment in a script as being uh, a little sticky note to anyone who reads the script. It's not meant to be interpreted by the, uh, uh, the shell. It's meant to be interpreted by the human reading the script. So uh, the only exception being this very first special uh, comment, which is for the shell, which is the uh, hash mark exclamation point line. So this very first line is a special comment that has to be the first line of the script. It is meant for both the human and the computer. Every other line in the file that starts with a hash mark is meant for uh, just uh, the human. So notice here I've put viewing environment variables and down here you'll see issue a command. So each of these comments gives us a little bit of um, information about what each of these code snippets is actually doing. So uh, the first thing that we'll do is we're going to talk about the echo command. And the echo command basically will just print back to the console anything uh, that it is given, whether it be a string or an environment variable. So let's uh, take a look at, also notice that everything in this script is commented out. So we'll be able to walk through one of these items at a time. So let's take a look at how echo works. Uh, and, and then what we'll do is um, talk about it. So in this case, I can echo anything. If I do hello, uh, oops, and of course I put an exclamation point in there. If I do <laughs> echo, hello, it's going to print that back out to me. Uh, how would you put the exclamation point in there? It probably needs to be escaped. Uh, and that worked. Hmm. There's probably some way to do that. Anyway, I'll leave that in there. It's kind of a good error. But idea being that you can echo out uh, any component and it just kind of prints stuff to the screen. So we can use echo to print statements to our user about components that we want printed there. If I use single quotes, pff, works fine. So, um, and that's because uh, double quotes, um, special shell characters are interpreted and between single quotes, uh, they are not. So I should have probably used, if I was gonna use anything special like that, single quotes. So anyway, echo just allows us to print things out. Echo also lets us view information from environment variables. So in this case, if I echo my path, dollar sign, capital P-A-T-H, uh, I get that information. So let's see how this works in our shell script. So in this case, if I run uh, my bash snippet script, uh, the only two lines in that file that are not commented will be the lines that run. And those are two echo commands. So you'll notice that in this case, it says the value of the home variable is, and it prints the variable value of my home variable. So if we go back in and we look at that file, we look at the top of that file, we'll just head, look at the head, you'll notice that the first command uh, that gets printed is echo, the value of the home variable is, followed by home. So pretty valuable, pretty important stuff, um, and kind of a nice little uh, script uh, that we can use for printing stuff out. So we use echo for print statements. Let's jump into this file and look at the next component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'll leave this in the lecture. I'm going to comment those lines out and then I'm going to jump down and I am going to um, go to the next set of lines. So in addition to using the echo, we can uh, command to print some feedback to the user. We can also follow print statements with just regular uh, commands. So let's go ahead and look at how this works. This is not the most exciting shell script uh, in this case, but it does give us some information about um, 
how we can combine print statements uh, or echo statements and also the output of commands. So you'll notice that this is telling me my current working directory. It just executes PWD. And notice that the shell script uses my current working directory uh, to execute uh, because I'm in this directory. So when PWD is executed, it shows me what directory I'm currently in. So what I'm going to do is jump back into VI. I'm going to comment out the script we just ran, and I'm going to go ahead and uncomment the next script. In the previous line, we had to execute the PWD command on its own line. We could not actually um, print the PWD command output on the same line as our echo, so it looked a little untidy. We had to have, you know, the output of the PWD command is on one line, and then we had the output of the PWD command itself on the other line. So what if you want those both to be on the same line? Well. Uh, as you saw with my little error earlier, double quotes have a special meaning versus single quotes. And double quotes allow us to um, interpret shell commands with inside of or inside of those double quotes. So in this case, if I wanted to take the previous item that I ran and I want to combine it uh, so that everything prints on one line, I can use the echo command. I can give it the same string as before. I can use the pwd command. And now I'm using a special construct uh, of the bash shell that allows me to basically grab the output of a command before it goes to standard output and use it in any way that I want. So anytime you want uh, output to go somewhere other than to the screen or other than to the terminal, uh, you want you put that command inside of the dollar sign parenthesis parenthesis. This is a special bash construct that will grab the standard output of a command and allow us to use it in um, a way that uh, is a little more programmatic than just printing it out to the screen. In this case, I am going to print out to the screen, but by using this construct, I can print out the output of that PWD command on the same line as the rest of my string. So let's run this, take a look at it, and then we'll look at a little bit more advanced way to use the PWD command. So if I run uh, my bash snippet script now, oops, let's clear this, and run that. <clears throat> you'll see that now my output comes out on the same line. Why? Well, because what happened was the PWD command was run, the dollar sign parenthesis construct grabbed that output and basically delayed the printing of it and inserted it into this string so it comes out in one nice neat line. So how can we use that in a little bit more of an interesting way? Well, if we go down to the next component in this file, uh, what I'm gonna do is look at how I can actually assign the output of a command instead of having it print directly to the screen or having it concatenate with a string. Uh, concatenate is just a programmatic way of saying glue one string to another string. Um, what I can do here is I can take the output of the PWD command and save it into a variable. And if you've ever done any programming, you'll know that a variable is uh, basically a named place in memory that you can store a value and access it later by that name. If you've never done any programming and you've never seen the concept of a variable, just think of it as a place you can store stuff so you can get at it later. Usually think of like a, a variable as a bucket or a, a shoebox. So in this case what I'm doing is I'm taking the output of this PWD command and I'm going to put it into uh, this storage location. You know, it's a box and it's going to hold the output of the PWD command. And you'll notice that the construct I use to do this is I have an equal sign between the two. And in this case, this is called the assignment operator. So what I'm doing is I'm assigning the output of this command that would normally go to standard output. But instead of letting it go to standard output, I'm grabbing that uh, output and I am putting it into this storage location so I can use it later. So it's just kind of sitting in there. And then what you'll notice is down here on my echo command, I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did before. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put instead of the PWD inside of these uh, dollar sign parentheses uh, construct that I used before, I'm going to use the name of the storage location that I saved that output into. So it's kind of like saying, oh, I stored that in the red box. Okay, well then when I want to access that data, I say, hey, go get it out of the red box. It's just that in this programming example, I use the name output for my variable. And here, I just go ahead and get that output value. Uh, one of the unique things about shell scripting is that um, there are some weird characters that you can use. Uh, when accessing things from a variable, it's a good idea to wrap them in a dollar sign curly bracket. This basically gives you uh, a little bit of visual feedback that the value you're dealing with inside of that dollar sign curly bracket is a, a variable, a storage location. So when I look at this line, if I read it, it basically says, whoa, what are these weird characters? You say, okay. Well, I know that dollar sign parenthesis is a way to grab the output of a command and put it uh, and, and do something with it, either assign it to a variable or use it uniquely inside of a string. 
But in this case, what I'm saying is, hey, this name inside of this dollar sign curly bracket, uh, this is a storage location. And I want to go into that storage location and get whatever is stored in that storage location and print it out to the screen. So again, if we look at how this works, and we run this, I get the exact same output this time, but instead of the pwd command directly generating this output, I generated the output, stored it into a storage location, and used that value later.